Hello everybody, Daniel here, and thanks for tuning in to my Simpsons Hit and Run Let's Play. We're going to watch the opening clip, and then I'll be right back with you. So welcome back and thanks for watching. I'm very excited to be doing this. The Simpsons Hit and Run is one of my most favorite games. If you've never played it before, I highly recommend that you check it out. Hey, hey, I'm endorsing a new cola, kids. And this one isn't poisonous to anybody. That we know of. New and improved Buzz Cola is made from only the finest sugars and waters. Plus, it has a special ingredient, too hot, for the FDA. It'll give you the get up and go you need to do all the pathetic stuff you have to do. Try new improved Buzz Cola. Mmm, cola. Must get Buzz Cola. It came out in 2003. I think it was about 10 years old at the time. It's basically Grand Theft Auto, but in the Simpsons universe with a ton of Simpsons jokes. So if you're a fan of the Simpsons or even just Grand Theft Auto, you should definitely check out the game. All right. Homie, somebody ate every dessert in the house. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Oh, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Millhouse. So this game is mission based. Each level has about seven or eight missions and you play as a different character in a different place in the Simpsons universe. So in this first level we're playing as Homer and we're playing in the suburbs of Springfield. Well, it's about time. So each level has about seven or eight main missions, uh, and there's about seven main levels. Dust. And in each level, you get to play as a different character, and you get to explore a really cool different area of the game. Now this game is mission-based, but you don't have to play the game just bouncing between missions. You can take time and you can spend all your time exploring around. This game has so many hidden collectibles, so it's a very open world. You can do a lot of what you want and play at your own pace. Hey, Apu. Give me a cola and I need another bucket of ice cream with mini pies. What happened to the ice cream with mini pies your wife bought this morning? I probably ate it. I don't remember stuff too good. So this game has the main missions, but there's dozens and dozens of collectibles and hidden jokes for you to find um, in every single level. So the first mission here was just, you know, teaching you the ropes of the game. Just getting in the car, walking around, driving, and picking up an item. left for school without her science project. Can you get it to her? Oh, do I have to? You can drop it off on the way to work. And I have to go to work? This next mission is one that you definitely need to get used to. It is you know, racing in your car, trying to beat someone. And there's a lot of these types of missions where you need to race someone, you need to pick up items, you need to smash their car, you need to avoid their car. Uh, the majority of the game is spent in the car, so you'll definitely get used to it quickly. And these types of missions are fantastic though, because there's so much scenery, there's so many jokes in this game, that doing these types of races all across the map, you really get to take in just how big the map is and how many details they, they put in. So you'll go do a mission where you race around, you'll see something that you want to come back later for. I didn't do it. If you're looking for a game that you can spend a lot of time on or find a lot of things, this is definitely it. 
Like here in the background, you know, there's little, there's items and there's jokes, there's a lot going on. So if you want to type in, that really just lets you do the exploring. Uh, the in run is a fantastic game to try. Thanks for bringing me my model of the digestive system. Hey, where's the gallbladder? I get hungry and. It was a fig. It was modeling clay. Oh. By the way, Dad, Mom called. She says she needs to talk to you at home before you go to work. Go! Oh! I'm so talented and good looking. So I believe Hinrun came out for many different consoles. I think it came out for PS2, Xbox, computer, and the GameCube. I like the PS2 version the most. I think the PS2 and Xbox are pretty much the same. The GameCube, I think, has a lot lower graphics, and I've never really been able to get the PC version working. So if you want to try it out, the PS2 version works flawlessly. So as mentioned before, this game is very much like Grand Theft Auto. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, there's the map, and around it is this little yellow uh, bar that, that keeps growing. And that basically keeps track of how many times you've broken the law. So if you drive over, a person, you hit someone's car, that bar increases. And when it fills up, you pretty much get a hit and run, which is the basis of the game. So you have to run around the city and pretty much, you know, break the law. But if you fill up that bar too much, the police come after you and they catch you and find you. Homer, go talk to Ned Flanders. He seems miffed and P.O.'d. Why me? I'm the world's greatest neighbor. I even have a mug to that effect. <sighs> I'm all in a dither, Homer. So many of my possessions have disappeared. I called the police to find the culprit. Culprit, eh? My lawnmower, my cooler, my lawn chair, a family portrait, even Rod's inhaler. What kind of sick individual would take this stuff? Oh no, I borrowed all of Flanders' stuff. Quick, think of an excuse to get out of here. Uh, excuse me, I think I have to go shuck some corn. So the game has a lot of jokes in there and they're actually pretty decent Piece sometimes. So one of the things to know about this game is that there actually is a story. Now, the little missions like this, they're just kind of standalone. They don't really add up to the big story. But as you finish the levels and you watch the cutscenes, or as you listen to some of the dialogue and find hidden things, you can kind of see how they all come together. A mission like this is just kind of for the gameplay, so you can get used to the map, get used to the characters, and, and have fun. But there, there is still a story here. What's next? Well, it's cooler. I gave it to Barney. Sad day. This happens every second Thursday. Uh, you remember that cooler I gave you for your birthday? Well, Flanders wants it back. Now what will I use for a toilet? One of the things you'll notice is each level starts off with a newspaper. And for our first level, it started off on October 25th. So each level, the newspaper is going to have a different story and it's going to advance by one day. So I won't give away too much, but progressing each level, we're going to culminate the story on Halloween. So like I said, I won't give away too much, but if you're a fan of the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, or you're a fan of, you know, like Halloween themes, then you'll definitely like the, the end of the game. So this type of mission you should definitely get used to, where you have to drive around and follow someone and hit them to pick up the glowing yellow items. It's a mission that definitely repeats itself in the game, but it's actually not that bad. Because usually by the time you do this mission, you're already familiar with the driving and you're familiar with the map. So you kind of know where they might be going and you know some good places to try to hit them. So you'll notice on top of the quickie mark, there's some glowing uh, orange items. And even back in the school, there were some glowing blue items. 
you know, this game just has so many collectibles that, you know, every room, every building, every place that you visit has so many different collectibles. So like I was saying before, if you're looking for a game that you can play, but also do just a ton of exploring and get reward for it with, you know, jokes and collectibles, it's a great game to check out. I forgot my mission. Gladys, look! I found your missing stuff! Now, about the reward. <laughs> Thanks, neighbor Rooney. Here's your reward. A prayer from the Lord's number one fan. Our Father in Heaven, bless this noble oaf. Stupid Flanders getting happiness from religion. Oh, that was too easy. One of the great things about this game is there's a ton to explore, but you won't ever really get stuck. You're never really left wondering where you need to go next. You know, there's some coins here and we can go do some of our own exploring. But once you want to hop back to the game, it tells you, you know, in the corner where, where you need to go, who you need to talk to, what you need to do. Homie, you're late for work. And today's your workplace evaluation with Mr. Smithers. You'll find my scorpion farm! Then where will my scorpions live? Only one person can help me. Lenny! So if you're like me and, you know, you're not always the best at always remembering where you're supposed to go in the game, uh, that's not really a concern with this game. So, so like I said before, if you want to go explore, do your own thing, and then come back for the missions, they're, they're going to be right here waiting for you. Or if you oh, want to go play the main game, play the main missions, champion. and then come back to hit all the collectibles, no, you can totally do that too, like I think I'm going to do here. This is another one of those missions where I was saying you have to get used to because it happens so much. You need to get in the car, you need to drive somewhere and pick something up. And it actually doesn't really even get that repetitive because you get to play as so many different characters, all the different levels, you get to use pretty much any car you want. There's dozens of cars, so it really does a good job at you know, keeping it fresh. But you can also just take a step away from the missions and go do all those collectibles or just, you know, explore or drive around. Hey, Homer, how about a breakfast churro? No time. Tell me where to find Mr. Smithers. Yeah, I think I saw him at the Quickie Mart. More breakfast churros for Lenny. I'm going to need a car with a little more junk in the trunk if I'm going to take him out. I wonder if Barney still has the Plow King. So this right here is a very common occurrence in the game where to complete a mission, you have to go buy a car from someone. So if we go to the start menu, we can see we have 65 coins and we need to go buy the Plow King from Barney. Barney, can I borrow the Plow King? Take what you want, sexy leprechaun. Just don't shoot me with that dart gun. Oh. Whatever. So when we speak to Barney, we'll see that the Plow King is about 150 coins and we only have 65, so we're only halfway there. Now, I'm not going to do a bunch of collectibles in this upload. I think I'm going to save that for a different video. I think I'm going to do the videos doing all the missions first and then a separate upload to get all the collectibles. But I'm going to show how to get enough coins to progress here. So the way you get coins in this game is, you know, find them on the ground like this or for the most part, breaking the lock. If you go run over a street sign, a stoplight, a mailbox, you knock over a vending machine, that's how you pick up coins. Then the drawback is the more of those things that you do, the faster the police come after you and they find you. So you need to come up with you know a bit of a balance running stuff over and picking up coins and also finding some of these hidden coins. So you know they left a bunch of coins here because this is just the first level, they don't want to make it too difficult. So we're just gonna go collect all these coins. They're not really you know, some of the hit they're not really the hidden jokes or the hidden collectibles in the game, they're just here. We're gonna get these coins and then go back to Barney. Uh, you can see on the map and on the screen that Barney has a dollar sign, so that means that he's selling something. So the reason we had to get the Plow King to begin with is we're going to have to be taking on Mr. Smithers soon. And the Plow King is a big, heavy vehicle. And to beat Mr. Smithers to the nuclear power plant, we're actually going to have to destroy his car. And the Plow King is a big, heavy vehicle, so we'll have to you know, ram into his car until it explodes. And so the reason we couldn't use the Simpsons Pink family car is because we need a car that can you know, really take a beating and smash into Smither's car. And that's kind of one of the bases for this game, is that you unlock dozens and dozens of cars. 
and each car is completely unique. Each car has different stats that are of uh, five stars. You know, they represent speed, handling, toughness, and that's kind of the reason why we can use the Simpsons car, because you know, it's, a, it's a fairly fast car, but it's not really tough. Whereas the Cloud King, it's really slow, but it can really take a beating if used to smash someone's car. So this mission is actually pretty simple. All we have to do is smash Mr. Smithers' car. He's shown on the map, you know, the little red triangle at the bottom. And all we have to do is just, you know, drive straight into him and try to hit his car as hard as we can. You know, the Plow King is slow, so just try to build some speed and make sure you don't waste a shot as soon as you get some speed. Just come up and, you know, hit him and you'll do some real damage. And so you'll see his car is already smoking. In the top left corner is his health bar, and we just need to fill that up. Every time you hit him, you're going to see that bar uh, keeps growing. It can definitely get annoying, like there, using a really slow car. Um, but you know, it's only one of the early missions, so it's not that bad. Just try to back them into like a corner, or try to really push them into something like a house, or if you can push them into oncoming traffic, uh, that'll really hurt them. That's what you get for expecting me to do the job for which I am paid. So we don't actually even need the Plow King anymore, and it's a really slow car. So what we can do is we can go to this phone booth, and we can call for a ride and get the Simpsons car back. And this is where you can, can you see the rating. You know, the Simpsons car I'll isn't very tough, but it has a lot better speed and handling than the Plow King does. This is a very common theme in this game. You'll you'll have to get used to it, but you know, as you as you get more used to the cars, as you play more of the levels, you'll get used to them. So chasing after someone and hitting their car is really not that bad. And you can repeat the missions as many times as you want. And the car you use really just depends on the type of mission. You know, you're going to have some missions where you need to carry a lot of cargo or you need to go really fast. So that's going to dictate which car you use. In this case, we need to destroy someone's car. So we need a big, strong, tough car. So I haven't fully decided. Let me know if you have a preference. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video just doing all the missions. So if you only care about, you know, just completing the game, you can just watch this video, just complete the missions. And then I'll probably save all the collectibles for a different video because there's so many collectibles that I really want to make sure to go back and show where they all are. There's so many collectibles, they, they will honestly probably take you longer than the actual missions. And the thing is, if I'm playing around here doing all the missions and doing all the collectibles, it's going to be really hard to find where some of those collectibles were. So if you just want to know where those collectibles were, I'll probably just put those in a separate upload. How can I sleep with that camera? Oh, sexy girls could be watching me on the internet. Stupid cameras, you should be smashed. I'll destroy you at your power source. <laughs> Sweet. The other thing is if you do a mission and then you stop to pick up a collectible, you will probably be there, you know, five, 10 minutes just to, just to keep exploring. So it could get a little distracting, which, you know, I don't really mind when I'm playing the game myself, but for this, I'll probably just do them separate. So those collectibles that I was talking about, that's really what makes this a fantastic replayable game. This game will definitely let you play at your own pace if that's what you're looking for. You, know, you can go do those missions, and then you can go do the collectibles <laughs> like at any time. You can even go do all the collectibles first. And the thing is, the game will encourage you to go get all those collectibles, because you'll be driving around for a mission. You're going to pass so many coins, so many glowing things that you want to explore. You know, some of the levels have such beautiful scenery, and they have so many hidden jokes and little Anyone things like from the TV? show that it really makes you want to go you know, spend hours just driving around, exploring every <laughs> little nook and like cranny. Mars will clean this mess up later. <gasps> Must never. Finally, I can get some sleep. Mindless drones, return to your ugly families. Ow! We're number one. If you ever We're see this, you know, one. like this glowing blue aura or the triangle button or whatever interaction button it is on your system here at the top, that means that this is an interactable item. When we go to the start menu and look at the level progress, we can see that there's all these different gags, like these interactable items. There's all these clothes, all these different cars, all these different things for us to unlock. So if you ever see me, you know, drive by a collectible or you see like a floating card 
or a wasp camera or something uh, don't worry about that I, I didn't miss it we're, we're totally going to come back to that we're just going to try to do all the missions first and then we'll do all these collectibles and you know these sometimes are little jokes from the tv show or they're just something you know funny from the game I don't really know how long this is going to take. I think the missions are probably going to take about, you know, half hour Ow, per level. And the collectibles will probably be anywhere from 45 to minutes to an hour. And it might sound, you know, like a chore, like that there's not many collectibles. But it just really shows off how big the levels are. And, you know, it really shows how much detail uh, and, and thought they put into these different levels. You know, you won't really get sick of it. You know, some of these missions you might get frustrated with. But then at that house, you can just, you know, you can just stop that mission and go explore. You can go run someone over or go pick up some of those collectibles and then come back. Sessions are fleeting. cartoon creator incarcerated in a Peruvian jail. In other news, local citizens are outraged over the discovery of surveillance cameras throughout the town. We go now to City Hall, where Mayor Quimby is fielding questions from an angry mob. These miniature cameras are an outrage. Spying on our women's dressing rooms, bathrooms, and locker rooms is unforgivable. I think I speak for all Springfielders when I say, where is the sexy footage? In other unexplained news, strange black vans have been appearing all over town. Marge, that black van is spying on us. Oh, homie, you're so sexy when you're paranoid. You know, Hanron has a lot of jokes, even some creepy ones like that. But like I mentioned, what if you're looking for a game that will let you play at your own pace or can take your own time, definitely try Hanron. If you like to explore and you don't really like to be told what to do, there's all those collectibles you can just drive around and explore. But if you're kind of like me and you like knowing exactly what's next, you know, sometimes you forget who you're supposed to talk to, but will also do that too. So it really caters to your own style of play. Uh, it was like that when I got here. Move it! Nothing lasts forever. So this is one of those missions unlike before. Uh, rather than trying to race someone or trying to destroy their car, you just have to follow them and keep a certain distance. This is another one of those mechanics that definitely happens a lot, so you do have to get used to it. In this case, you actually don't want to destroy his car. If you destroy his car, then he can't move, and the mission is never going to end because he never reaches his destination. You also don't even want to race him, because the thing is that green bar represents how close you are to him. You'll notice they don't always take shortcuts, the car you're following, but if you take those shortcuts, you can actually get too far ahead of them. So, you know, if they crash, or if they run into someone that slows them down, you can actually still lose because you were too far ahead of them, because you were going to the destination rather than actually following the car. So I actually knew that he crashes here and stops for a second, so I actually did the same, because if we got too far ahead of him, we would have lost. Don't worry, we're definitely going to come back and collect all of these coins. Oh, Mr. Burns is behind all this. Evil spying is so like him, that wrinkled old monkey skeleton. As king of the world! So 
So we saw what happened when we destroy someone else's car. Now with your own car, after you keep hitting things, you'll see the car starts to smoke and it'll keep smoking worse. And you know, the, the trunk gets damaged and is flying open. And eventually your own car will explode too. And then you're stranded without a car. Now you can go to a phone booth and just pay to have your car fixed. But you also notice there's these little wrenches around the level. And you know, there's tons of these wrenches. These little things are everywhere and you can just routinely pick them up while you're driving around. See, so there's already another wrench right here. So you can see at the gas station that Nelson actually has a checkered flag above his head. And the checkered flag also shows up on the map. And that's because each level has three different races, so we'll come back for Nelson later. Mr. Burns is spying on everybody. We've got to follow him. Not now, Homer. A new violent video game has hit the streets. And we need to get rid of it before it warps any children with its bloops and bleeps. But that game sounds awesome. And therefore should be destroyed. I guess. Everyone better stay out of my way. Piece of cake. So this is another really common mission, and in my opinion, this one is one of the more difficult missions. So what you have to do is you have to follow that car, and you actually have to hit him. And every time you hit him, he's going to drop an item that you need to pick up. And don't worry, it's going to tell you that he dropped an item, and it's even going to show it on the map, that little yellow glowing icon, and then you just need to go pick it up. But the thing is, he doesn't always drop the item right where you think it would. It's not always right where you hit them. I'm not sure, but I think you actually have to go pick them all up. So my strategy is usually, you know, hit them, and when you know it's going to be a good hit, maybe hit the brakes or just kind of back off them a little bit, so that way you can pick it up. You don't want to have to turn around to pick up the item. After you hit him a few times, you can learn how to anticipate where the item is going to drop. That's pretty much all you have to do. It's only the first level, so it's not too difficult. Uh, you know, maybe if you try to ram him into a wall or you lock him into a corner, then you, can, uh, then you can pick up the items a lot easier. For this mission, in the first level, they definitely give you enough time. Now, as the levels progress, you might have less time and it becomes more challenging. But by the time you have to do this again, you'll be a lot more familiar with the maps, you'll be familiar with driving and just with this mechanic. And don't worry, because you can always just replay one of these missions, no problem. And so if you haven't already noticed, you can actually just walk up to someone's car, you know, you can stop them in the road, you walk up to them and hit the interaction button, and you can actually take their car. Now you definitely unlock your own cars, but you know, if your car may explodes, or you're stuck without a car and there's, you know, a long stretch of road, you can just try to block someone and you can catch a ride with them. They're not really that fast. If you're stuck somewhere and all you have is the Plow King and you have a long stretch of road, it might make sense to go hitch a ride with someone. would play more video games about sharing. Bart, you know I abhor crazy plans. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go spy on my boss. <laughs> Everyone sucks but me. If anybody knows a great game about sharing, let me know. It'd be good to play one of those sharing games instead of one of these about mindless violence. So since we finished that mission and we don't have a car anymore, we can, can just run over to the phone me? booth and call I'll a ride. You in bank, well, it's about time. So pretty much everything in this game is destroyable. So the street light, the mailbox, and the stop sign, all of that, those are all destroyable for coins. Now you can go kick and knock something over and then you get the coin. The thing is you have to walk into the coin. If you're driving, the game automatically gives you the coin. So if you want to get coins, it's definitely a better idea to go drive and knock them over because it'll give them to you automatically. And it's also just faster. And I think we're actually going the wrong way here. Sorry about that. But honestly, just the more you play this game, the more you get familiar with it. So even if we went the wrong way, that's totally fine because that's the way that you discover things. You know, if you take the long way, if you take the wrong way, uh, it doesn't really matter because you're going to come across different shortcuts or different collectibles. And that's probably the only, re the only way you would naturally find some of these things is just by trying a different way. It's also just fun, you know, exploring the map too. Coming through. Wow, 
this car sure can take a beating. So anytime you drive by someone you see on top of that person or on the map there's a yellow dollar sign or the red exclamation mark, that means it's one of those bonus things. And you don't have to do them, you can completely play the game without them. But if you want to pick up costumes, play the bonus missions, get 100%, uh, that's where they are. like you're having one of your trademark adventures. Danger! Mr. Burns! Mini cameras! Black vans! Oh, good thing I'm drunk. Stupid drunk. Oh no, he's going to warn Burns! I can't believe I'm racing the same guy twice in one day! So as Homer just alluded to, you do sometimes have to do the same type of mission, and sometimes it's relevant, other times it's just uh, to artificially lengthen the game. So in this case, we have to race Mr. Smithers rather than destroying his car. This is definitely where you want to be getting used to the game and figure out the shortcuts and exploring. So when you do a mission like this, uh, you don't have to worry. The more knowledge you have of the area and your vehicle, the easier these are. We can take tire fire, you can cut through the trailer park, and you'll see on the map that he doesn't usually take these shortcuts. So if you take them, you can definitely get a couple seconds ahead. Now as you advance and get to the more advanced level, the enemies might actually take these shortcuts. So that's why it's a good idea to just keep exploring and get familiarized with them. So the biggest thing here is just try to avoid the traffic, especially the oncoming traffic, and try to avoid hit and run. It's pretty hard to get a hit and run and come back and still win a mission. You definitely do not want to miss that jump there, or you probably just want to restart the mission. I'm definitely speaking from experience, yes, you do not want to miss that jump. And yeah, if, you, if you've played this before, you'll notice I didn't always take every single shortcut. Um, usually I know of them, but they're not always worth the reward. Some of them, like the trailer part, I, I always screw that up and it can take me longer because I ended up hitting something. See Montgomery Burns, I know you're guilty! J'accuse! Sir? Fine, I admit it, I had Amelia Earhart's plane shot down. That hussy was getting too big for her jodhpurs. No! You're spying on Springfield with your black vans and surveillance cameras. Black vans? Hmm. Aren't they connected with some sort of pizziola concern? What? They were only pizza vans! I'm a class five idiot! Smithers, release the hounds! And if this oaf is an employee of the plant, fire him at once. In your face. So as you can see there, we just completed the seventh mission, but we're actually only 15% through this entire level, because there's just so many collectibles in this game. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to save here, and it'll bring me to the second level. And then the next video, I'll come back to the first level and we'll do all those collectibles and unlockables. And these newspapers, like I said, sometimes they help advance the story. Uh, this one is now October 26th. Sometimes the article helps advance the story. Sometimes it's just a little joke. Uh, this one doesn't really help that much. 
So I'm going to go back and return to the first level. We will then go collect all those collectibles and do the unlockables. Thanks for watching and have a great day.